Hey there everybody, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to use joint ventures to get brand deals. And this is gonna be a great video, even if you're a tiny creator or you're a small business, and let's say you don't have a ton of money for marketing and marketing budgets. This is gonna be a really great way to help attract the right kinds of people into your videos and your content and the stuff that you're putting out so that you can grow your business and also help another business at the same time. So this is really, really great that you can use at any point in your content creation career. It doesn't matter if you have zero followers or if you have 10,000 followers or even more than that. In this video, it's gonna be a very clear way for you to grow your brand or your business and at the same time help another brand or business. So let's get into today's video. Hey there everybody, my name is Brandon Brashears. I create daily digital marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, this is a great place for you to subscribe. You should absolutely be subscribed. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and comment below if you have any questions, you need help with anything. All right, so let's get into today's video. So especially if you're trying to get traction and trying to get your channel out there or your content out there, or if you're a small business and you're doing marketing right now, and let's say you have time, but you don't necessarily have the resources to go out and put ads out to grow your business, to grow your audience. It makes sense, right? It, it is difficult, especially if you're bootstrapping things. How do you get to the next level? Well, I think that brand deals are a fantastic way to do that. So how first are you going to attract the right kinds of companies that have the ability to do brand deals? So I think if you start off especially with smaller companies that have that are actually looking to grow um, and expand their audience. Typically, it needs to be something that's relevant to what you do, but not exactly in direct competition to what you're doing. So I'm gonna give you some examples here really quick. Let's say that you are a digital marketing agency like myself. There's a lot of brands and companies that are aligned with digital marketing agencies that aren't in direct competition. So. Let's say that I was, and this is an actual example, let's say that I have a marketing agency, I do ads for veterinary practices, and I know that there's a web development company who builds websites for veterinary practices. I don't offer website building through my services, so we have the same audience, we're both trying to reach this audience, it makes a lot of sense that we can use this as a brand deal to get more exposure. Another example is I have uh, a podcast that's in the veterinary industry and my audience is veterinary practice managers and practice owners and there's a company called usedvetequipment.com. They sell vet equipment to veterinary practice managers and practice owners. They sponsor my podcast and I read the little thing in the beginning of the podcast. You can do the exact same thing with your brand or your business. It doesn't even matter if you have a personal brand or a personal YouTube channel where you're making videos about you know whatever kinds of adventures you're having or your family. There's always going to be products or services that are going to be related to what you do. You have to remember that if you're building an audience or even if you're just starting out, the attention that you're going to be able to get is going to be very valuable. If you have content that's coming out that is useful or entertaining or just appeals to a certain group of people, that is valuable. That's the value that you're going to bring. Don't ever underestimate that value. So you might say, well, that sounds great. You know, you have a podcast and my podcast is established. It has a lot of listeners and things, but it wasn't always that way. So what did I do to grow it? I had to run ads and things. I did have the means to do that, but I could have approached one of these other companies and said, hey, I'm starting a podcast. Would you like to, to sponsor it? Any of the sponsorship money that we'll use is going to go directly to promotion of the podcast. So if you're just starting out, you can say, hey, you know, let's say you are a local realtor and you wanted to create content around things to do in your town. You could approach the local businesses and say, hey, we're going to do a feature of the local businesses around here. We wanted to just, you know, promote each other's businesses and things. If I produce the video and here's what it would look like and here's some of my work, would you go and sponsor it and put some ad spend behind it? You know, if you put even $50, we could probably get you know, 500 to 1,000 views on Facebook or, you know, depending on what you're trying to do and, and which target you're trying to reach, you could tell them what they'd be able to expect. So you don't have to have something that's that's huge and you don't have to have something that's, you know, really established, right? I think when we think of brand deals, especially on like Instagram or on YouTube, we're thinking of these really large size channels that have millions of followers 
and they get deals from Samsung and they get, you know, new phones and new stuff and Tesla's flying them out to do things. It doesn't have to be that big. Companies are having a serious trouble typically with time that they don't have enough time to create content. And um, they know, everybody knows that they need to be in the content creation mode. They know they need to be doing social media and social networking. But they oftentimes don't know what to do. And then they also don't know how to make something that's high quality. So that's where you come in and you get started. So here's a few things I think that you need to consider. The first thing that you need to consider is you always have to speak in terms of what's in it for the other person. That's what they care about, right? Unless it's a friend or a family, they're not gonna do something just to help grow you. So every conversation that you need to have with these brands and these businesses that you're gonna work with needs to be in framed in, in terms of what's in it for them. So that's number one most important. That's when, when you're having these conversations. Number two is that you need to be very considerate of what your audience is going to think, what's going to be in it for them. So you have your audience and that's the people who you're trying to serve with your content. And then you have the people that you're trying to serve with this brand deal. And it needs to be a win, win, win. So you need to win, the brand needs to win and the audience needs to win. You should never do a brand deal if you don't think that everybody is going to benefit from it. So that's number two. And if you're starting out, if you frame it in terms of, hey, we're gonna use all of the money to get ad spend out there, I'm trying to grow my brand. So you're basically getting a free video with, because especially if you're not a proven entity, it's hard to get things, get the ball rolling. But hopefully after you do the first one, and you should just say, hey, this is going to be a limited time deal because I'm gonna be growing my brand and the channel and things. So if you wanna get in before, I'm going to have to add production costs in there. That's a great way to add urgency and scarcity and then also let the person know that, hey, next time we do this, you're gonna see benefit. And when you do, you're gonna have to pay for that, right? Because we're just getting started. So number one, frame it in terms of benefit for the, the person that's going to be doing the sponsorship. Number two, make sure that the, the brand alignment is correct with your culture and the way that you think about business and how you do business and what you want your channel to be about and things like that. And then number three is that you should, as much as possible, especially when you're starting out, you need to provide results for people. You know, having brand deals and brand awareness is great, but at the end of the day, you know, display ads and branding ads, they don't do a lot in terms of, you know, immediate results. So we need to figure out how can we provide immediate results for the brands and the businesses that we're doing brand deals for. I think the best way to do that is to have a special offer or a special code or something that the, the person that's doing the brand deal needs to give so that they can track and measure results. Because if you want to prove that, hey, this has value, people are going to watch this, we're gonna do the right kind of targeting, we're gonna do the right growth, that you need to be able to say, like, here's what we produced and you need to have buy-in from the person that you're doing the brand deal for. I'll give you an example. So let's say that, like, I have a video that is about Ad Espresso that does really well. Ad Espresso is a software for digital marketing professionals. And I get a lot of views on that. So if I said, hey, Ad Espresso, I have this video and um, you know it's doing really well. In the future videos, if you want me to sponsor, if you wanna sponsor some of my videos, I'll reference to that video and you can then you know, get exposure and brand deals. And if you could offer a special like trial period or a special code for my audience to use, that way they would be benefited and you can also track the results. So it needs to be trackable, right? And that, is it's ultimately if you can't track it then you're just going to be guessing and that's hopefully with especially with digital marketing all the sophistication that you can create in tracking and the simplicity that you can create in tracking hopefully you don't have to just you know hope guess and say hey you know we got 5,000 impressions and the average view time was three minutes and 10 seconds and you know th those are great details to provide but they need to be on top of how many people actually took action so that being said, I think that it's very, very important too that you are able to track results internally. So if you have, uh, oftentimes if I'm doing a, a brand deal, like for my podcast um, or helping some of my clients with brand deals, I will give links to things, but I wanna make sure to be able to track it on my own. So I'll use a bit.ly link or I will use a link forwarding, like pretty link URL, um, which is a, a WordPress plugin that allows us to see how many unique clicks, allows us to do tracking on the geography of where clicks are happening and things like that. So that way you can say, hey, 
you know, we got 110 clicks for this ad on $50 of ad spend. That's amazing. How many new clients did you get? And so that way you can tell them, hey, this is all of the action that happened. This is what you got. And especially I've found too that if you have brands or businesses that are maybe also extremely busy and behind the ball a little bit, if you put it back on them to say, hey, we got you all of these results, like that, that's valuable for you, right? Because if they're the person that's, that's dropping the ball, maybe they're not doing the sales follow-up or they're not closing deals, then there's nothing that you can do. You can only bring them the people and show them the results. So get as much data as you can, as much data as possible. It's very, very helpful in providing additional resources for people down the road. So if you could say like, you know, here's some case studies of what we've done with this brand and this brand and here's how it worked and this is what they found and that way you're building a portfolio that you're going to be able to use to get bigger and better brand deals and if you can get these kind of deals where you're you're aligning with brands and businesses that have the same kind of audience that you're trying to grow that way you're going to be able to grow your channel a lot faster so that you don't have to start from scratch with no resources so i hope that this was really helpful please comment below if you need help with anything please don't hesitate to reach out. And if there's anything I can do for you, be sure to comment. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you on the next video.